Magic players, welcome back to some Modern on Budget, and this is Mails from Legends. Now, today we're going to be talking about Living End, because Living End kind of got a nerf when the Simeon Spirit Guide got taken away from us, but uh, honestly, I think it's probably one of the decks that actually didn't lose as much as people think. Now, obviously you'll see that I made the deck very, very different than what you're probably used to. You're probably used to the Cascade going down into that living end and just being able to win like that. But honestly, this deck relies more on the like mid game because what you need to spend your early game doing is controlling your opponent and making sure that you're able to actually fill your graveyard, where if you're trying to combat it super early, you might not get as many creatures out. Now, uh, we also do have that backup with Crashing Fo Falls, and I'll explain what everything is, but first I want to talk about how simple our mana base is. We have four Temple of Epiphany to help us filter for any of our combo pieces, uh, we have Shivan Reef as a way to filter our mana, and we have seven islands and four mountains. Now, we only have eight red cards in the main deck, we have Lightning Bolts and Electric Dominance, if it'll show up. And I'll explain what both of those do in a moment. But the main purpose of our deck is actually to land Crashing Footfalls, which says uh, create two 4-4 four, four Rhinos with Trample, or Living End, which says each player removes all creature cards from his or her graveyard from the game, then sacrifices all creatures he or she controls, then puts into play all cards he or she removed this way. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to exile your graveyard, then you're going to board wipe, and then you're going to bring, well, better than a board wipe because you make them sacrifice, so it gets past indestructible. And then uh, then what happens is the cards you exile from your graveyard all get reanimated. Now this happens on both sides of the board, but there are, it, it's really, you're going to be profiting way more from this. And so your your main combo is going to be with Living End, and then you do have the backup Crashing Footfalls. Now you'll notice that we actually don't have black or green mana in our deck, and I know that sounds very greedy, but we have a lot of filtering in this deck. We have a lot of card draw, and we have a way to cast these without paying their mana cost. So we don't have to suspend at all. If you wanted, you could technically add some black or add some green, to the mana base, but I think that, well, I think you don't really need it. After the playtesting, after everything I've done with this deck, I honestly think that you will do just fine with this list. And I've I've talked to I've even talked to some living end players because they were really bummed out because of the ban. I was like, hey, would this work? And they were like, oh my god, I love you. Um, but so the main combo of the deck, of course, is going to be Electro Dominance which deals X damage to any target, you may cast a card with mana cost X or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. If X equals zero, you could play Living End, you could play Crashing Footfalls. So the whole people being sad about not being able to combo out super early with the Simeon Spirit Guide, you can technically still do it on turn two. It won't be good, and honestly it wasn't good in the original where you would do it on turn two, because you wouldn't have enough time to cycle your creatures. Uh, then we also have uh, As Foretold, which says uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a time counter on it, and once each turn, you can put you can play a you can pay zero rather than paying the mana cost for a spell if its mana cost is X or less, where X is the number of time counters on As Foretold. So even if you just play this, you don't even have to wait for the time counter. You're you're technically going to be only be able to cast a zero drop. The Living End and Crashing Footfalls are technically zero drops. Now, the way that Electro Dominance and As Foretold works with these cards is really weird because they can't technically just be cast for zero from your hand, but if you have Electro Dominance or As Foretold, you're allowed to do that. Anyway, uh, we have Lightning Bolt for removal, we have Mana Leak for um, just a way to delay your opponent, a little more control -y version of the deck, um, and it's just a way to stop a huge threat from entering the board um something for example that you would definitely want to counter is to fairy time rattler because he ruins the lecture dominance combo uh the as foretold combo you're a little better on but 
the Electra Dominance really gets hurt by the uh, Teferi Time Raveler. Anyway, wh how are you going to get creatures in your graveyard, though? That's very good to ask, because we have Curator of Mysteries, which has Cycling for 1, and then we ha which is a 4-4 four, four flyer. Then Street Wraith, which is a 3-4 Swamp Walk, uh, Cycling, Pay 2 Life. Windcaller Ave Windcaller Aven, 4-3 Flying, Cycle for 1. And when you cycle this target player, or wait, target creature against flying. So who knows? Maybe you land one of your creatures. Maybe you land a curator of mysteries while you're waiting. But who who knows? Uh, Striped Riverwinder says uh, cycle for one, and it's a five five hexproof. Now this is really good. Uh, and also, I have to say, I'm a huge fan of this artwork. That's just a real quick side comment. I just really like that artwork. I don't know something about it just pops out. Anyway, the last card, the last creature in your deck is Waker of Waves, which is a 7-drop, seven 7-7, seven, seven. creatures your opponent's control get minus 1, minus 0. Now, it's not cycle for 1, but it says 2-mana cycle, well, 2-mana discard, look at the top two cards of your deck, put one of them in your hand, the other in your graveyard. So this is even better because, uh, well, you're not cycling for 1, but you're discarding it, you're looking at the top 2, you can even put another creature in your graveyard, and then you can get something else in your hand. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to even fill up, our, fill up our graveyard even more, and once we do that, we can Living End to take everything out of our graveyard, board wipe, and then bring all of these creatures back that we spent the first few turns cycling, and the the reason why I like cycling decks so much is the reason I built the Boros one too, because the Boros one I really feel like could be viable in modern. Um, is that like I love decks that, in order to successfully pull off your combo, you actually end up getting closer to your combo, because every time you cycle, you have a higher and higher chance of hitting Living End, of hitting Crashing Footfalls, of hitting Electric Dominance, or As Foretold. It's an it. I love it. The way you naturally progress towards your win con, like the way you get to the point where you could win, you're actually getting closer to actually finding your win con as well, and so it works so well with each other. Anyway, that's the main deck, and before I go to the sideboard, if you like this deck, please hit that thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, please hit subscribe. Get notified whenever I post a video. I'm posting a video every day now. Um, honestly, next week, I think I might be including some gameplay in the week. So if you're interested in that, stick around and wait to see that. Um, but, uh, moving on to the sideboard, we do have four Tormod's Crypts as a way to, uh, mitigate our opponent's graveyard strategies. Dredge is fairly big right now. Um, and then Repeal, uh, I actually had to look up MTG Bounce Target Permanent. Uh, when I was building this deck or modifying the list is because I couldn't remember what it was called. Uh, this is a card get, that gets fairly forgotten about, but it's really good. Uh, it's X blue, return target non-land permanent with mana cost X from their, to its owner's hand, draw a card. What you can do is you can play this bouncing their like Graft Digger's Cage, you know? Graft Digger's Cage is a really popular one, and that would really... That would be really sucky for us because we wouldn't be able to use our combo. We can also use this to bounce anything pesky like a Teferi Time Raveler. That'll take up more mana, but honestly, it's what you might have to do. A Braid as extra creature removal if we need it and also artifact removal. Aether Gust as a combo and aggro hate. Anger of the Gods as graveyard and aggro hate. And... Because if you just drop this uh, against a dredge deck, they lose the game. Now you'll real you'll see I'm running a lot of two and one ofs in the sideboard, and the reason for that is like you easily get to them. Like I said, all 17 of these cards is just gonna draw you even more. So and even if you bring in repeal, that draws a card. So that's why I'm running like one ofs. So anger of the gods. If you drop this against Dredge, their creatures are exiled, they practically lose. Next up is Blood Sun, which says, uh, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. All lands lose abilities except mana, except mana abilities. So if we bring this in, we won't be scrying, but it also won't enter tapped. 
uh, but because that's an ability that it loses. But really, what you bring in Blood Sun against is anything that uses a lot of like land synergies, like uh, like the Titan decks that go grab Valakut, or even bring this in against something like uh, that uses a lot of fetch lands. You would bring this in if there's a deck a card in your deck that's just not good. Like Lightning Bolt is just not good really against Titan decks, so you could bring in Blood Suns. Anyway, uh, I hope the I hope you enjoyed the list. As you can see, it is fifteen dollars on MTGO, and it is ninety nine fifty one in paper. So we st we st we were able to uh, stick with our budget, and I really enjoy this deck. First few turns, you're like cycle, 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 and they're like, wait, oh, and then realize what we're doing, and that moment of realization is really funny. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the deck, and I will see you next time.